Hey there! This video is going to be all about rigging up the Blackmagic 6K full frame. And in this video, I will show you some ideas that you can use to build out your Blackmagic rigs and use the camera in a variety of different situations. You can see I have a lot of different stuff here and I can't wait to share all this stuff with you. And I love making these videos because I also love watching these videos. I feel like I always pick up something new when I watch rigging videos, different parts, combinations, ways to set up the camera and all that kind of stuff. So I will be showing you specific gear, but also give you some ideas about how to rig up the Blackmagic magic in general. Now there's also some new gear that just came out from small rig that I'm going to show you here. So if you're interested in that, this will be uh, informational to you as well. And full disclosure, small rig did send me a lot of these parts to test out and review. They don't get to see this video before it gets posted. They didn't pay me anything to make this video. The opinion about all this stuff is my own. And if I didn't like it, I wouldn't recommend it to you. So I just want to make that really clear with all of you. And of course there are links for all the gear and the parts that I'm going to be talking about in the description down below. All right, so we'll start off with the camera all stripped down just as is. And one of the nice things about Blackmagic in general is that you can actually just use it like this. It does have a battery. It has a really big screen, which is really nice to use. And you can just use it just like this. Now, one thing that gets talked about a lot, of course, is battery solutions for the Blackmagic because the internal battery doesn't last that long. In terms of run times, I can get just over an hour with the Blackmagic battery. And a lot of times I will just use it stripped down to with just the battery inside the camera if I'm on a, a really simple setup. I made a video testing out some third party options for batteries and run times and stuff. And I will leave that video link down below if you want to check that out. You can also add a battery grip to the bottom. They sell it for $149 and it adds two more batteries. So you'll have two more batteries in the grip and you have to leave the, you can leave the one on the camera. So you get three batteries altogether. So you get about three hours of runtime plus or minus depending on which batteries you're using. And then the last option will be using something like an external battery, like a V mount, which I will talk about later on this video. I think that's a really good solution for long days on set, uh, interviews, like long run times and all that kind of stuff. The other thing you probably notice here is I do have the EVF on the camera and I haven't owned this very long. So I will make a video down the road to talk about the EVF. I just want to put some more time on it before I give my opinion about it. But so far I do really like it. Now, when I am using this kind of stripped down like this, one thing I want to do is put a strap on it if I'm just carrying it around, maybe doing travel uh, stuff or street video or wildlife, landscapes, whatever you're, whatever you're doing and you want to just keep it really stripped down. Uh, I often use the Peak Design straps. I really like them and they have the anchors, which I'm sure a lot of you have seen before. So these will go onto the camera. Now they mount right here. I just don't love these ways to mount them here. I feel like these aren't super, super strong and I feel like you're gonna get a lot of rubbing on the plastic and all that kind of stuff. So one benefit of the cage is you have a better place to mount these on, but you can just mount them right on the camera and go from there. Now, the main part of this video is gonna be the new camera cage from Small Rig. So let me talk about that. So first of all, this cage comes in three different configurations and Small Rig did send me the the biggest package, but I'm going to show you the different configurations and why you might want to go with each of them and the price points and all that kind of stuff. So there are, like I said, there are three different options, but the first one, we'll just talk about the cage. Before we get into those, let's talk about the cage itself. So this is the cage here. And one thing I've noticed about cages in general, and, and also I've used a lot of cages from Small Rig, this one feels really sturdy. It doesn't have flex to it. It feels like maybe the metal's a little bit thicker or maybe the fact that it's got the like the two sections here. I've used a lot of cages from Small Rig on mirrorless cameras and they all have a little bit of flex to them. This one feels really, really sturdy. And I, I haven't used a cage for the bla other Black Magic, uh, the cages for the other Black magic cameras, but this one, I, I was saying like, it feels really good. So let me give you a quick tour on the cage before we get into rigging it up. On the top here, we have mounting places for all sorts of stuff. We will definitely utilize that for handles, monitors, etc. We also have the cold shoe here, which is great for microphones, accessories, and also the SSD holder, which I will show you. Like I said before, we have these really nice strap holders here. And on the bottom, we also have another strap holder, which is really cool because this is really great if you have like a strap going across your chest and you want to kind of have the camera off to your side. That's really handy. I love having that option. On the bottom, we do have two screws that go into the bottom of the Black Magic because that has two, which is fantastic for twisting. It has the Allen key holder, which a lot of cages have nowadays. One thing I don't like about this cage is it doesn't have an Arca Swiss built in. I don't know if that's a deal breaker for you. Uh, I often am putting a Manfrotto plate on a lot of my stuff when I'm putting on a tripod, 
but if you want it really stripped down, you want to just pop it on like a light tripod, you have to put your own Arca Swiss on there. So I just want to mention that. On the grip side here, it does have this nice curved grip and I really like the way it feels when you're holding it. I'll show you that when it's on the camera. And on this side, we have access to all the ports and we have some things here. This will hold the cable clamp. And then over here we have a NATO rail so you can slide on top handle or side handles and stuff like that. Another thing that's cool about this cage is it actually can be converted to a half cage. So if you remove these screws here and on the bottom, the whole right side of the cage will just come off and you can run it as a half cage. And I'll show you that a little bit later once I get it on the camera. So like I said, there are three different configurations for the cage. Uh, you can get it just the cage itself. And at the time of recording this, it's selling for $100. It also comes with this here. This is a lens adapter support, which I think is really cool that they include. And I will definitely install this to show you how this works. So let's get this on the camera and start talking about this. So the way that this mounts is pretty simple. Like I showed you, it has the two screws on the bottom that go into the camera and then there's one on the top that goes into the quarter 20 on the top. So we just pop this in and we'll start on the bottom here. So pretty easy to get this going. And I like how those are captive screws. Fortunately, the one on the top is not captive, but we'll just tighten these down. And then on the top, I just have it sitting in here. We can make, you can, have it live wherever you want. I just screwed it in there so I wouldn't lose the screw. And we'll screw this in here. All right, so the cage is on. Pretty straightforward. Like I said before, I really do like how this is curved here and it makes it feel like you're not really holding onto the cage so much. You do get a decent grip on the camera. And it, it like I said, the, the curved nature here, I think is really nice how they put that together. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is put on the lens adapter support. And this is gonna be really cool because it'll help us a lot when using an adapter. Now, I don't know about you, but for me personally, I don't really own a lot of L mount lenses. And so I'm adapting lenses to this camera most of the time. And so if you're in the, the Blackmagic ecosystem, then you probably are mainly invested in EF lenses. And so this is a great thing to do is to put an adapter on this. And I think a lot of people are using that. And this was the first L mount camera for Blackmagic. So uh, an adapter is gonna be really important. So the first thing I do is get this uh, lens adapter support on. It just screws on with these two screws on the bottom. Now for an adapter, I recommend the Sigma MC21, and this one converts from EF to L. Now they also make an MC21 that goes from Sigma SA to L, so make sure you get the right one. I'll leave this, of course, linked down below with everything else. One thing is I there's an extra like rectangular piece that sits on the bottom here for different mounting options. I took that off um, so that it would mount a little bit better with this, and I'll show you that in a second. So let's get this mounted on the camera here, and I will show you what this looks like. Okay, so we got that all mounted. Now what's cool here is when you raise up the lens adapter support, you can see it fits really really nicely against the bottom of the adapter. So when I'm doing this, I don't wanna push it too hard because I don't wanna put stress going upwards, but I wanna just sort of, just firmly put it on there and then tighten it down. That way when you have lenses coming off the front of the camera, in uh, maybe they're weighing down a little bit, this will be supported here, so you won't be putting stress on the mount itself. This is, uh, the, the MC21 mounts really snugly onto the camera. I don't get any wiggle or anything like that, but it is nice that it comes with this little lens support. Um, I think it's pretty cool to have that on there. So I just wanna sh let you know about that. When you buy the basic cage kit, it comes with the cage and the lens adapter, so this is what you'll get. Okay, if you go up to the next level for the kit, there's the basic cage kit. This one is currently selling for $180. It comes with the cage, the lens adapter support like I already showed you, but it also comes with a really nice top handle, the SSD holder and the cable clamp. So I wanna talk about these. So first of all, let's talk about the handle. The handle is pretty cool. So it has RE locating pins, which will go on the top of the cage. It holds onto the Allen key right here with a magnet, which is really handy. It has quarter 20s and stuff all over it. On the top, we have also an RE locating pin. We have multiple cold shoots. We have one here, here, and one on the back. So a lot of different options. And we have RE locating on the front, which is really nice for mount mounting monitors. So that's absolutely fantastic. And it has these really nice uh, grips for your fingers. So it's really uh, nice to hold and it's fairly compact. I think it fits this cage and this camera really well. So let's get this mounted on the top here. So this just bolts on to the RE locating. And the nice thing, like I said, it has this Allen key built in. So what you can do here is you can put it in and tighten it down 
and then this can go back in here. And you can have this for all sorts of other stuff. And of course the Allen key for the cage sits in the bottom as well. So we have the top handle on here, nice to hold, pretty solid setup. The other things it comes with, like I said, is the SSD holder. So if you are looking to mount an SSD on this, this is a really good solution. Um, and the way this works is cool because it has a cold shoe, but it also has this little um, pin here that corresponds with the little hole right here. So when you slide this in, it clicks in. There's no like release pin or anything like that, but it's pretty snug and it sits in there really nicely. And the next thing is going to be the cable clamp, which you're probably gonna want if you're using an SSD. So let's get this flap out of the way here. This cable clamp clamps on the USB-C for whatever you're using, but most likely you're gonna be using it for the uh, SSD. And then the other one is for the HDMI. So these two screws go into the top here. The top two holes. Okay, I don't want to tighten these down too much. Let's get an SSD. Now, I don't personally use SSDs very much, but I know a lot of people are used to that workflow. It can also be really handy if you are just looking to hand off a drive to somebody or something like that. So let me show you how this mounts on here. It does, it's pretty cool. So it has these sort of spring mounted things right here. So we're just gonna pop this on and then it holds it nice and snug. And there's a cable clamp right here, which I can tighten down. And then over on this side, where the ports are, you can pop in your USB, and then tighten this down. So like I said, my preferred method is not using an SSD, but if you want to have that workflow, this holds it really well. It's very secure because you have a cable clamp up top here and you also have the clamp down here. You can also get a different cable and reroute this or whatever, but I just wanna show you how the SSD kit works on this. And so this is the basic cage kit. It comes with all this stuff. So the full kit is known as the advanced cage kit. At the time of recording this, it's calling for $350. Comes with everything I've mentioned so far, but it also comes with a few extra accessories. It comes with this really nice side grip, which has got some cool features. I'll show you once it's mounted onto the camera. It also comes with this base plate and 15 millimeter carbon fiber rods. So this would be the full kit, would come with all this stuff. So before we get into mounting the stuff onto the camera, I'm gonna take off the, the SSD setup. Um, at, like I said, personally, I think nowadays with the media options we have, I prefer to record internally. It's just one less thing to deal with, less cables, all that kind of stuff. And also the price of media has changed quite a bit. So this camera takes the CF Express Type B cards, which is fantastic. I have been using these Angel Bird Pro SE cards for a while now. They are very inexpensive. They're sometimes going sell for like 130 bucks, but they're definitely under 200 bucks or you get a one gig version of this for about 200 bucks. Uh, the one thing they, they've been working great for me. The only thing is some of the plastic starts to chip off the back. I don't know if that's common with other CF Express B cards, but in terms of performance, they work great and they're super fast and you sort of eliminate all of the potential issues that you'd have with external recording. But like I said, there are some situations where SSDs make a lot of sense, especially if you're handing off like a, a, a drive to a client or something like that. So let's get this stuff put on here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put on the base plate. So the base plate of course goes on the bottom and there are two screws that hold this in. Now base plates are really cool because it gives you a lot more options for follow focuses and uh, lens support and makes your whole rig look really cool as well. Uh, isn't that, and to be fair, uh, sometimes just rigging up your camera will make your rig look more impressive to clients. As much as we know that sounds ridiculous, it is definitely true. So if you show up with a small camera, uh, you know, you might get some looks, you may not, depending on who your clients are, but if you show up with a big rigged out camera, people think they're getting their money's worth. I know it's silly, but it's definitely true. Okay, so we got the base plate on here and then just mounts on pretty pretty simply. The one thing about the base plate here is that you're gonna have to put your own um, tripod plate or whatever on here. There's lots of different screw options and we do have two screws here for like a Manfrotto plate or something longer. Uh, but you also have, you know, the two screws going into the cage and the two screws from the cage going into the camera. So we're not gonna get any twisting, which is super important. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide the, the rods in here and these come these rods I think they come with are a good length. They, uh, they seem to kind of do what you need to. Of course, if you need longer rods, you can definitely do that, depending on what you're mounting. So I'm get these roughly in this, this spot. We'll have to adjust these a little bit later. Just to get these on here. 
Okay, now we got our rods on there. Cool. All right, so the last part of the kit is the side handle. And this is a pretty fancy side handle. It's got some cool features, which I'll show you on the camera. But the first thing is it has this NATO connection here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pop this on the side of the cage and tighten it down. And now we have a side handle. Now the side handle is great for a lot of reasons. Of course, holding the camera. The nice thing here is there's a little lever here that when you press it, you can actually rotate it. So you can rotate it for different angles which is cool. The other thing that side handles are really great for is a good place to mount a microphone. A lot of times when you have a monitor on the front or on the top, there's no way to put a microphone. So the cool thing on the top of this side handle is that we have RE locating pins for magic arms or monitors or whatever. We also have a cold shoe on here so we can put a uh, microphone in here. So that's really cool. So this is the full setup, but let's keep going and show you how I would rig this up. So first of all, let's get a lens on this. So I'm gonna mount on here my Leica R 50 mil Sumicron. Love the Leica R lenses, they are absolutely fantastic. And this one has a gearing on it, so it'll be great. The next thing I wanna talk about is going to be a follow focus. And there are lots of different options here and it's totally personal preference. Sometimes I use one, sometimes I just pull focus with the by the barrel of the lens, depending on what's going on. You can get a motorized follow focus and you can mount it on the 15 millimeter rod here. Uh, so lots of different options. What I like this guy here, this is one from Small Rig. This one is fairly inexpensive for lightweight work. It is also not very heavy, which is cool, but it's nice because you can adjust uh, the pivot point here by loosening this and you can manipulate the angle and stuff like that, depending how you have it mounted on here, but it just mounts on with the, uh, on the, on the rod right here. So I'm just gonna pop this on. and then tighten it down. So now we have our follow focus on there. So pretty nice to make smooth focus adjustments and that sort of stuff. The other thing here too that's cool is when you're holding it by the handle, you can easily just keep your palm under here and just rotate the follow focus like that. So that's pretty cool. And again, you don't have to use a follow focus, but it is personal preference. All right, next let's talk about batteries. And I think anyone who's used a Blackmagic camera before knows the eternal struggle and decision you have to make with mounting an external battery. The most common place to put the battery is gonna be on the back of the camera, which makes the most sense for a lot of reasons, except for one where you block the beautiful screen. Now for me personally, I like the battery on the back on this camera because if I'm rigging this camera up for a bigger job, long run time, stuff like that, I want a heavier rig in general for maybe handheld use or whatever, then I'm gonna use a monitor anyways. And so to me, I'm okay with blocking the back screen because the bigger monitor is gonna be better anyways and uh, I can just reach in there and change the you know settings and stuff like that. And you can move the battery around quite a bit. So let me show you that. I think that's kind of the trade off here. So again, if you're blocking it in the back, then use a monitor or whatever. But I, there's other options too where you can get batteries that mount on the bottom. It's all personal preference. I'm gonna show you what I'm using here. And part of that is because I have a lot of V-mount batteries and I think a lot of us do as well. So what I'm gonna mention here is this V-mount plate. This one slides onto the rails in the back. Uh, this is a dummy uh, plate or adapter because this doesn't have any power in it. So there's no extra D-taps or USBs or anything like that. This one is pretty inexpensive. This is the one I have. Small Rig also makes one that articulates, which is pretty cool. That might be coming handy. I don't have one here, but I'll leave a link for that one down below as well. And so I'm gonna pop this on the back and then we'll talk about batteries. So this just slides on the back here and you can slide it forward and backwards after you have the battery on there, which is kind of nice to get it out of the way. So we have this on here. Now, the reason I like to use V-mounts is because they're just very universal batter universal in terms of using them for all sorts of different stuff. And Small Rig has sent me quite a few of their batteries over the last year or two. And I really like their batteries a lot. I use them in a variety of situations. They have all different sizes. And I use these for lots of things, including like powering cell phones and tablets and computers. And I take them on vacations with the kids and they're powering their accessories too because they always have USB-C. And one of the coolest things about the newer V-mount style batteries, the mini V-mounts, is that they charge with USB-C. So some of these will take different amounts of input power, like the 99 I think will take 65, and then the new 212 takes up to like 130, 135 watts of charging. So you can charge these in like an hour and a half or so, and some of them will charge even faster if you have like the right power adapter. I don't even own a V-mount, um, a V-mount charger, like 
the the sort of old school chargers because they're bulky, expensive, and you can actually charge it faster with USB-C and you don't have to take an extra charge with you if you already have one for your laptop or whatever. So I really like the V-Mount batteries. They are absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm gonna make a video uh, eventually about all the different battery options that Small Rig has because I've tried out quite a few of their batteries. But we can take any of their batteries here. Let's take the smaller one, uh, the 99, and we're gonna pop it on the back here. So that's all mounted up. And the one other cool thing about this is that when you have this mounted and you're trying to handhold it, it's really nice because you can press it against your chest just like this and the battery is sitting against your chest. It's a really firm connection and you can sit here and you can pull focus and all that kind of stuff. If you've ever used one of the Blackmagic Pockets or the cinema camera here with the same body design, it's kind of awkward when you're holding it against your chest with the screen sticking out and stuff. So if you're going handheld, this is actually a really cool solution for that. All right, so to power the camera with this battery, uh, you need some sort of cable. Uh, there's a lot of different options. Uh, this one that I got off of Amazon from Alvin's Cables works pretty well. This is D-Tap to the 12, 12 volt two pin connector that goes onto the side of the Black Magic, so you can use something like that. This battery here has one D-Tap, and so if you're powering other accessories, you may need a different rear plate or a different battery. The new 212 battery from Small Rig, this one actually has two D-Tap ports on it, which is pretty cool, so you'd have to keep that in mind. So we'll, we'll use this cable here to power the camera. Of course, you need a battery still in there, which it's already in there. And the next thing I wanna talk about is going to be a monitor. So let's get a monitor mounted on this. I need my monitor mount, which is right here. This one is pretty simple. This one is RE locating pins to the monitor mount, and this will pop right onto the front of the handle. So there are two ways to mount it. You can mount it this way or this way. I like to mount it down, and that's so it keeps the monitor a little bit lower. I find that a lot of rigs get super, super tall and just kind of obnoxious, so I'd mount that on there. Now, in terms of monitors, I personally own two monitors. I have the small HD uh, Cine 5 and the small HD 702 Touch. Uh, the Cine 5 is absolutely amazing. It is a fairly small monitor. I mean, it's a five inch monitor and um, it's a little bit on the chunkier side, but I'm a huge fan of small HD in general. Their monitors are absolutely incredible. The 702 Touch is a little bit older of a monitor. It's not in their modern line, but they still, I think it's still for sale. Um, and I've just had this for a while, so I really like this. So let's put the seven inch on here. Uh, I often use five inch monitors for handheld work and seven inch monitors when I'm on sticks, um, doing interviews, stuff like that. But I've used seven inch handheld as well, but I love the 702 Touch, it is a beautiful monitor. So now that I have the monitor on here, uh, you just need an HDMI cable to go from the monitor to the camera. So this is a pretty inexpensive one from, um, from Small Rig that works well. Uh, and then you just gotta manage all your cables and all that kind of stuff. So in general, this is the rig that would be like fully rigged out for me personally. Um, I have everything I'd want on here um, in terms of monitor, battery, follow focus. And you could also, like I said before, if you need audio, you can easily put a microphone onto the cold shoe here. This is my favorite little microphone. This is the Sennheiser MKE 400. And you can see here how this is not interfering with the monitor and that's because of the side handle. So the side handle does give you that option as well uh, to mount a microphone over there. So anyways, this would be the fully rigged out kit. All right, so now let me start stripping this down and showing you some different configurations that you may like. You may not want a full setup like this every single time. So let's take off the microphone. Let's take off the side handle here. Let's try to get this a little bit smaller. The next thing you could say is maybe I don't want to use a top handle, no problem. So we could take off the monitor. We can take off the top handle. And you can mount the monitor right on the top. So we have a setup like this. So that's pretty cool. If you don't need a top handle, this definitely brings it down a little bit. I think it's a little bit more comfortable and less sort of large. Top handles are great for carrying it around or doing different moves with handheld and stuff like that, but you could mount it just like that on there. So let's say you want to run it more stripped down, maybe just use the internal battery and use the monitor on the camera. Let's take off some of the stuff here and make it a little bit more simple. So we could pop off the monitor, take off the Microphone, side handle. Let's get this a little bit smaller here. I'll take off the battery, like I said, because we want to use the back screen. 
you can see how modular it is and how quickly this is to take apart. It's fantastic. The next thing is I'm gonna take the follow focus off and I have another solution for the follow focus I'm gonna show you here. If you still wanna follow focus but you don't want the rails on the bottom of the camera. So we'll take the follow focus off and then we'll pop the rails off. screws on the bottom. Probably just taking the rails off first, so it probably went a little bit easier. It's all right, so we got this off. So we're basically down to the camera cage. Let me take this SSD off. So pretty straightforward, pretty stripped down here. You can even take the, the clamps off if you're not using a monitor or, or uh, USB for storage. So we're back down to just the cage itself plus that lens adapter support on the bottom. And if you want to use a follow focus without using the base plate and rods and all that kind of stuff, there's another option which is really cool. Now if you buy the follow focus kit, it does come with these parts, but you can also buy this part separately and I'll leave this listed also separately there. But if you buy this kit, it comes with this and it comes with this little rod. Of course, you'll need a different rod depending on what you're doing. But what's really cool about this part here is that it's actually a NATO rail and a 15 millimeter rod holder. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna screw this into the top of the camera here, into, oh, sorry, into the cage. And what's really sweet about this is that you have a NATO on the top, which I actually kind of prefer on a lot of situations for top handles, because you can just slide it on. And you also have this rod holder right here. So this is a pretty short one. Uh, if you had a different lens, this may not work, but we're gonna put this in here and tighten this down. And then I'm gonna use the follow focus that we were just using before. And I'm gonna mount it right here. And now we have a pretty cool setup where I can have a very light setup like this and I can pull focus. And that's really cool. Of course, if you have a longer lens or if you, you know, the focus uh, gear is in a different spot, then you need a different size rod. This one just barely reaches. Uh, but you can also mount this onto the side over here uh, to get a little bit more reach or just to get it in a different position. So I've also mounted this down here and that's pretty cool. Now the other ni nice thing, like I said before about having NATO on the top is you can take a NATO top handle like this one here. I love this wooden one. Uh, and I can slide this on here. And now I have a nice little setup here that I can carry around. I also have a follow focus. So there are a lot of different options here. So as I take this stuff off, I just wanna mention there's one other thing before that I talked about which I didn't show you, and that's the ability to use this as a half cage. So let me take all this stuff off and then I'm gonna also take apart the cage like I showed you. There are those four screws. There is two on the top and two on the bottom, but let me get this off first. So these two here and these two on the bottom here. So let me take those off and then I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so here it is with the side taken off and a little bit of a different configuration that I wanted to show you. So once you have the side off here, you just have a half cage. So if you really don't like the feeling of the grip with the metal on there, or you just want a lighter rig or anything like that, you can take that off. The nice thing about the half cage is you still have all the mounting points you had before. You have the one on the top and the two on the bottom. So it's very sturdy. It's not gonna twist or anything. So that's nice. A little bit of a different configuration here. Also, like I said before, I mounted that rail with rod holder on the side here to give you a different um, setup here to show you a little bit lower of a follow focus. It's kind of cool. Now, I do really recommend probably for most of the situations to leave the full cage on there for protection. This is like an all plastic camera for the most part on the outside and uh, it will definitely keep it from getting banged up quite a bit more. Also, uh, you lose that strap holder, which I was talking about on this side here too. So there's a few reasons why you might want to keep it on there, but you do have the option to run it stripped down or whatever. So hopefully you get some ideas from this. I think that a lot of these are cool products and I love modularity where you can rig it up or rig it down depending on what you're doing or the mood you're in or, and all that kind of stuff. So like I said, I'll leave links in the description for everything I mentioned. I know there was quite a bit going on here and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. And if you did hit subscribe and otherwise, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.